it's really important that we tell this story and tell it properly in the words of the pastors, giving the pastors an opportunity to speak their motivations. And I, for me, the goal of the documentary is to show that it didn't matter your theology. It didn't matter your style. You could be as wild as Archer Pulowski or as gentle as Tim Stevens. Your theology could be one of Anabaptist or Evangelical or Pentecostal or Baptist. None of it mattered because in the end of their crime was that of being a Bible believing Christian who believes that their God is above the government. That that is the one thread that endures through all of this. So when you hear people say, well, Art, you know, he's so loud. He's so aggressive. Um, I don't like his language. Okay, then tell me about James Coates. <laughs> tell me about <laughs> Tim Stevens. Or, you know, like uh, those those uh, Christians in Aylmer, they dress strange. Their worship service is a little weird. It's it, it's not something that people are used to. Um they bring the horse to no frills. They bring the horse to no frills. That's <laughs> old order Mennonite <laughs> country. So it, it didn't really matter because it happened across all provinces um, in different parts of the country. What was the crime was be just obedience to God above that of Justin Trudeau in the state. There's an agenda. And I said, we won't fall for it. The police came, they pulled up and we were in here. We were singing. I actually waved them in. I said, come on in. I mean, come join us in the singing. They took their hats off. They walked in. The sheriff was up front. God will bring us through. And I said, we will not bow down to your gods. We won't. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No frills. The people are shopping. People are going in and out. This seems very strange to me. And they said, well, for the sake of the community, you have to stop that. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't think we can do that. They said, well, I think you have to. And I said, I don't think I have to. Yeah, and I, I could totally attest to that. Um that part of the goal. I mean, I, I even think my goal is even just a little bit different, but they both kind of work together so well. Yeah. Of, um, like I said before, you know, I'm not even really Christian, um, but I, I understand and I know that this country was built on the foundation of God and the Christian morals and Christian ethics. And, you know, I follow those, even though I'm not Christian. And I want this documentary to be someone or to be something that someone like me who's 24 or maybe they're 20 maybe they're 35 who isn't christian can watch this and say oh crap you know if they're going for these people you know i i know i'm next um these are like that is they are the people who built this country right uh so long ago like that kind of um that religion so it's just extremely important that uh we at least protect that uh even as non-christians that it's it's extremely important you know, for me, um, I went to northern Iraq in 2019, late 2019, November 2019. And just, you know, like three months later, by the time I got back, the lockdowns were here. And I went to northern Iraq to document the return of the Christians after the ISIS genocide. And I, I came home and I was embarrassed. You know, I was really embarrassed. I thought, you know, I, I, I'm the point of being a Christian is you're not good at it, but it's okay. Cause we have forgiveness built right into it. Um, but I thought, you know, like I, I, I care about these things. If I were tested, would I do what they did? You know, because the Christians didn't want to relocate. we we went there as rebel news um, in partnership with Mercury one and the Nazarene fund thinking, okay, we're going to raise money to get these people out of here. They survived ISIS. They were butchered in their churches. ISIS dug up their graveyards because even the Christians couldn't rest in peace. And, uh, I thought, how, how did we let this happen? How come we never prayed for them once in our churches? I came home so embarrassed and humiliated and, I thought, how did it ever get to this? Like, how did it ever get to um, we're butchering Christians in their churches? And it's a slow creep. And um, I, I came home thinking, oh, this is the new thing that I am radicalized against. I've always been against persecution of uh, religious believers. I've always been someone who cared in religious freedom. But when I came home and I saw that, I thought, not only did we do nothing, we didn't even care. And I thought, no, 
maybe I can't, I can't undo a genocide, but I can care and I can be aware of these issues when they come home. And uh, I think that is one of the reasons why it's so important for me to do this documentary is um, it, it started here, that, that slow roll down the hill towards something more terrible. It starts with forcing Christians to close their doors, telling them how they can worship. And for, for me, it's just also, I want to make sure that the people who want us to forget are never allowed that from us that I, I, as the good book says, I will forgive. Maybe one day I'm a far, I'm a far more vengeful Christian than I should be, but I don't want anybody to forget what these people did in the name of public health. Oh, hey, what you just saw there is a clip from my weekly full-length show, The Gun Show. It airs on Wednesday, but this is the internet. You can watch it whenever you feel like. You just have to become a subscriber to our paywalled premium content. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com to become a member today.